kitchen is often called the heart of the home. Why? It's where comfort food is created, where people eat, where they share stories, and occasionally break into song. This is my kitchen. Welcome to Carol's Kitchen. Our special musical guests today are the Herbert sisters. All three are graduates of Maranatha Baptist University. Teresa Herbert, the eldest, has her master's in horn performance from the University of Minnesota School of Music, and she teaches music at Woodcrest Baptist Academy in Fridley, Minnesota. The middle sister, Jody, uh, has her PhD in mathematics from Kansas State University and she currently teaches math at MBU and as you can see she plays the flute and the piano and is quite musical in her own right and the baby Trisha Herbert recently Trisha Taylor as of June 22nd she heads up the uh, music program at Faith Christian School in Pekin Illinois and she also teaches some math classes. I think you're going to enjoy the music they're going to share with us today. today is Parmesan crusted chicken tenderloins. To put this together we're going to create an assembly line. In our first place we'll have a flour egg mixture and then the Parmesan uh, mixture in this bowl in this plate right here. So half a cup of white flour three eggs Beaten. That's good. And in this plate, we will put three quarters cup of panko, or you might just think of them as breadcrumbs, prepared breadcrumbs, three quarters cup of uh, 
Parmesan cheese. And then we'll mix those together. We'll add to that a mixture of a quarter cup, excuse me, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper and a half teaspoon each of garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, and salt. Mix that together. Looks good. So we'll start. Remove these items. Our chicken tenderloins. Uh, I was able to purchase them already cut, but you can certainly take uh, chicken breasts and cut them yourself to uh, finger sizes. Tip it in the flour egg roll it in this and we'll set it over here to wait to fry it You're welcome to, if you are interested, to change the meat. You could possibly use pork cutlets. It works beautifully with the chicken. Having the egg in between, uh, actually having the flour first, gives something for the egg to stick to, which gives the breadcrumb and cheese mixture something to stick to. While you're doing this, you can have your grill or frying pan heating up to a medium temperature so that it's ready to fry when your cutlets, your tenderloins, are ready to go. I will stop when I get what it looks like a frying pan's worth of chicken tenderloins. I think maybe one more. Before we fry these, I'm going to wash my hands. Now 
Now this pan has, this frying pan has been preheating and it's uh, at a, a medium temperature and I will place uh, four tablespoons of margarine in here. To prepare to fry the chicken tenderloins. Start putting these in. Try to arrange them. pretty good eye. You will fry these for two to three minutes on each side and then and then flip it over and on the other side so it's golden brown and uh, and then it'll be ready to go. While the chicken tenderloins are frying let's listen to some more beautiful music from the Herbert sisters.
So now while the chicken tenderloins continue frying, we're going to do our sauteed zucchini. I've picked four medium-sized zucchinis. Cut off the ends. And then cut them into quarter inch slices. We'll turn on the stove, the burner, to a medium temperature. So it can be preparing, and I'll put uh, four tablespoons of margarine to melt in the pan while we're preparing the zucchini slices. perfect season for zucchini. Pretty soon your neighbors are going to have zucchinis that they're trying to give away to you because their garden is producing way too many, more than they can eat, and that's your blessing if you don't have a garden. double duty here. here. Let's dump these into here. I add a tablespoon of uh, chopped uh, garlic. it and let it simmer to perfection. After we get done, we'll salt and pepper it to taste. It's pretty simple, but it's very tasty. While the zucchini sautés to perfection, we have time for a story. Our story today is entitled, Bubbler or Drinking Fountain? If someone says, Crick, instead of creek, pop instead of soda, or bubbler instead of drinking fountain, there's a pretty good chance they hail from southeastern Wisconsin. Sometimes we locals live in oblivion of our linguistic idiosyncrasies. I remember well a bubbler story that my mom used to tell from her World War II days when she was in the Coast Guard. One day, while stationed in Cleveland, Ohio, Mom was given the less than glorious task of cleaning all the drinking fountains in a large military facility. Armed with rags and a bucket of cleaning solution, she moved from floor to floor asking people, could you tell me please where the bubbler is on this floor? Without exception, 
Her inquiries were met with looks of confusion, head shakes, and shoulder shrugs. Ha! Huh, what an unobservant bunch of people, she thought to herself as she traversed the halls in quest of bubblers. Back in her barracks, she shared her frustration with her bunkmate, Irene, who brought mom up to speed on drinking fountain nomenclature, and they had a good laugh. When I was a little girl growing up here in Watertown, there was a freestanding pedestal bubbler on Main Street at the corner of South 2nd Street, right next to the J.C. Penney store. The bubbler was locked in the on position during the summer months. For me, getting a drink at that bubbler was a highlight of any walk down Main Street. Today, the 2nd Street bubbler is only a distant memory. I guess water in Watertown is too expensive to leave a bubbler running like that. Go figure. So, why do we native southeastern Wisconsinites say bubbler instead of drinking fountain? Many claim that bubblers were invented, first manufactured, and the term patented by the Kohler Company in Sheboygan County during the early 1900s but an archivist there says otherwise. Kohler did and still does make water fountains they call bubblers, but the term more than likely came from good old-fashioned water coolers, kind with the large inverted reservoirs of water with a spigot at the bottom. As water poured out the spigot, air bubbles floated upward in the reservoir, and thus was born the term bubbler. The Kohler company just borrowed the term for their drinking fountains. Kohler's early bubblers released water vertically, but you don't see uh, that kind much anymore. They were re replaced with the arch bubbler, which is much more sanitary. No matter how old I get, I still love taking a long, luxurious drink at a bubbler on a hot summer day or any day for that matter. Access to clean water is essential to life. That's why we find cities, villages, and entire civilizations built along the shores of lakes and rivers. Our own town of Watertown was settled along the meandering waters of the Rock River. Sometimes people drill hundreds of feet below the Earth's surface to find their source of life-giving water. For you see, no human can survive without water. Back in Bible times, Jesus Christ himself, in conversation with the woman at the well, used the thirst-quenching and life-giving qualities of water to illustrate the everlasting satisfaction that comes with the salvation he freely offers to all mankind. The Gospel of John records, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Like the woman at the well I was seeking for things that could not satisfy, but then I heard the Savior speaking, Draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. The end. While I serve up our Parmesan crusted chicken tenderloins and sauteed zucchini, the Herbert sisters are going to favor us with one more song.
it's time to enjoy our parmesan crusted chicken tenderloins and the sauteed zucchini uh, but before we do Trisha could I get you to read uh, a verse for us it's John 4 14 B the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly Let's dig in. For a copy of today's recipes, phone 920-262-4021 or email watertowntv at charter.net. And to see a program on demand, go to watertowntv.com We'll see you next time for Carol's Kitchen. <laughs>